Buenas tardes, Buenas tardes. Feliz, feliz, año, feliz, año, feliz, año, feliz año 2022 para todos. Soy Yolanda López, profesora y coordinadora de la Escuela de Educación, Mención, Idiomas Modernos Inglés de la Universidad Católica Andrés Bello. Nos acompaña la profesora Indira Bakchi, representante del programa Virtual English Language Fellow de la Embajada de los Estados Unidos en Venezuela. Y juntas nos llevamos de la mano este proyecto, este espacio donde vamos a compartir con ustedes. Queremos darles la más cordial bienvenida a nuestro Educap TV Inglés. Es un espacio interactivo, lúdico y pertinente para reforzar las clases en el área de inglés dirigido a ustedes, estudiantes de tercer año de educación media general. Los estudiantes de la Escuela de Educación de la Universidad Católica Andrés Bello, Johnny Anderson y Reinaldo González serán nuestros profesores facilitadores. Ellos han creado un espacio en Google Classroom para ofrecer actividades asíncronas que complementen los encuentros en Zoom. Gracias a ustedes por estar. Bienvenidos a nuestra clase. Una vez más, feliz año para todos. Y a continuación, empezamos con nuestro espacio. Adelante. Hello there, guys. Hello. Happy New Year to everyone. I hope that you had a wonderful celebration with your family. And of course, wishing you and yours a safe, healthy, and prosperous new year. Welcome again. And as Ms. Yolanda said, welcome to our EduCap TV Inglés for third year. Uh, as you know, we are your teachers, Reinaldo Gonzalez and Johnny Anderson. We are glad to start a new year again with you. In today's class, uh, we are going to see modal verbs. This is our class number 11. It's amazing how fast uh, it's everything going. But here we are. Let's start today's class. Let's jump in. Okay, people, welcome again. I'm very glad to have you here. And thank you, Reynaldo, for introducing me. So just one more little thing, please. Or true big rules in here. Just turn up your mics, okay? Just try to stay up. Uh, I will say polite in this space. Raise your hand if you have a question or write in the chat otherwise, okay? Okay, excellent. So uh, as we are starting the year, we need to talk a little bit about the new year resolutions. So that's the first thing, thing that we're going to learn today. How to express our new year resolutions. Welcome, Leticia. Welcome, Luisana. Hey. Okay, the second thing, how to recognize and use the most common model verbs, our topic of today. And find the difference between modal verbs. Okay, as I said, to start our class, hello, Leticia, how are you? Uh, to start the class, we're going to have a Kahoot for our new year resolutions. Happy New Year to you. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Okay, as always, guys, we have our link. We have our code to, to link, the, to join, sorry, the Kahoot. Let me see. Okay, we already have Leticia. Excellent. Okay. We have Lucena. Excellent. Okay, Miss Indira is is joining too, or. <laughs> uh, 
I'm coming, one moment. Okay, don't worry. Uh -huh. Okay. While we wait, I'm going to explain the activity. Uh, we have to complete our next year resolutions. We have, uh, tenemos un enunciado que dice next year. And we need to um, select the correct option according to the picture that we have in the Kahoot. And we have eight questions. So let's wait for Miss Indira and we'll start. Okay, sorry, it got offloaded, so I had to download. Don't worry. Okay, perfect. We have Baby New Year. Excellent. Uh, so, welcome to the Kahoot, guys. Let's see. We have our first question. Let's see. We have a little boy cleaning his room. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah. We have a little boy cleaning his room. So, what do you think it could be his next year resolution? Uh-huh. Okay, excellent. Let's see. I must clean my room. Excellent. I, <laughs> I mustn't clean my room. Okay. Uh, well, mustn't is el negativo, and well, that's not really accurate for a New Year resolution. So, well, <laughs> in this case, it's, it's not the correct one. But yeah, as Johnny say, is a mood. Yeah, we understand. <laughs> Good job. That's that's the next one. Okay. <laughs> Good work. Let's see the second one. Uh-huh. Okay. In this one, we have two, two brothers playing video games. So what do you think about this one? Two answers are correct. Two options. Okay, we have one answer. Excellent. Two answers, good. Okay, let's see. Uh -huh. So I should play less video games. Excellent. I must learn English. Uh, well, uh, the, the blue one is correct. And of course I must, yeah. But well, like it's not according to the picture. Uh-huh. Okay, the other option was the green one. I opt to play less video games. Uh, in some minutes, we're going to explain uh, a little bit that model verb, so don't worry. But both options were correct. Excellent. Okay, let's see the, uh-huh. Okay, good work. Good work, excellent. Uh-huh. In general, Ocho and Shu are the same. That's correct. Uh, okay, uh, we have the third one. We have a boy doing something in the table. So what do you think? He's doing homework. Huh? Okay, that was fast. Let's see. I have to do my homework. I must do my homework. Excellent, excellent. Both of them are correct. Good work. And you like Leticia is on fire. Good work. Uh -huh. Okay. This is easy for you, actually. Okay. Good work. Good work. Let's see. Uh -huh. So the fourth one. Uh, okay, we have 
got rid of me. What? Uh, oh. Okay, one answer. Uh huh. This one had. Okay. Okay, good work. I have to stop eating junk food. Good work. Mm -hmm. The other ones, of course, are, are not correct because, well, it's not very healthy, let's say. Okay, good work, girls. Uh-huh. Oh. Okay, listen is joining again. Uh-huh. Okay, there there you are. Excellent. Joining. <laughs> okay. Okay, nice. Let's do the next one. Uh -huh. In this one, we have a boy drinking water. So what do you think? In this one, two options are correct. Okay, perfect. That was easy. I have to drink more water. I should drink more water. Excellent. I have to and I should. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, let's see. In this one, we have three, three kids preparing for a race. Let's see. Let's move out. <laughs> uh -huh. Please don't select the, the red one. Okay, okay, this one was easy. I must exercise more. Excellent. It was easy. Okay, we have two more questions, I think. Okay. Mm. Uh -huh. Question number seven in this one. Okay, we have four kids with some vegetables. And two options are correct. They want to win for everything. <laughs> uh -huh. Two option, two answers. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Good work. I should eat more vegetables. I have to eat more vegetables. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Good work. Okay. And the last one. Okay. So what do you think about this one? That one was I'm, hard. That one was difficult. <laughs> well, that, that was the idea. This was a little bit tricky because almost all the options were correct. Uh, I'm going to be happy. I must be happy. And I have to be happy. I should be happy. Eh, gramaticalmente es correcta, pero bueno, no es como que muy alegre que digamos, ¿no? Entonces, bueno. I'm going to be happy. It's a little spoiler of, of next topics. So, well, that's a little, es una pequeña pista que le dejamos por allí, ¿no? But anyways, excellent work. I have to be happy, I must be happy. Mm -hmm. Okay, good work. You did excellent with this topic, good work. Oh, Leticia, woohoo! 
Very good work. Okay, excellent workers. That was excellent. Mm, I, I think you're going to handle really well the topic of today. So, okay. In this case, we'll see what is a modal, okay? What means a modal verb? So in general terms, a modal verb is a special verb. It's a special word that affect the meaning of other verbs or change it actually, the verbs in the sentence. For example, if you use should plus go, doesn't, it doesn't have the same meaning as I use go alone, okay? In that case, we have a completely different meaning. In this case, it will be an advice or an obligation, but we can also use modal verbs for necessity or prohibition and some other uses, okay? Por ejemplo, en español, diríamos algo como deberías hacer tal cosa o deberías ir. En inglés, utilizamos should en este caso, okay? Let's see. So in this case, I think this is a very, very, very easy exercise for you. I think it's an easy piece because the big deal in here is identify the modal verb in those sentences. So I will say, Luisana, read the first one and then tell me what is the modal verb in there. Right. Um, you must stop when the traffic lights turn red. Okay. And the model verb is most. Great, great job. What about you, Leticia? Let's go with the second one. We have to wear a uniform at the school. Great and job. The model verb yeah. is half. Okay, very good. Now we have a little side note in here well two actually this little word in here is wear okay almost like the verb in past we have to wear a uniform at school okay great pronunciation by the way and then we have have to have to works as how could i say that yeah it works just a one model verb i know we have two words but it maintains the structure of just one verb, like must is the same thing, okay? I mean, the same model verb, but with another structure, okay? Just in case. Now, great job identifying the model one. Let's go with Reynaldo and the third one. Okay, uh, you should do exercise at least three times per week. And the model is should. Yeah, I must also. Great exercise, Reynaldo. And then we will have Leticia again. Just one more time with the last one. She ought to go to his house by bus. And the model verb is... Um, Oak to. Great job. It's almost the same as have to, okay? Those structures need the two to have sense, okay? Need the words to make sense. So a great job. Any questions in here? No questions, I think. Okay, so remember, the pronunciation of up to the last one is like eggnog. <laughs> okay, just, just kidding. Remember, it, it will be like up to, okay? Yeah, I, I thought you have nightmares with that word the last year. <laughs> so in here, we have a little video that helped us 
to practice the permission, prohibition, and obligation, and non obligation in English. So let's jump and do that. Welcome to another English class. Today we are going to talk about permission, privation, obligation, and no obligation. Let's begin with permission. With permission, we are going to use the modal verbs can, may, and could. So remember that in the last class we used may and could to ask politely. You, uh, you were asking for permission at that time. So it has the same meaning. And could. Can is very common to ask or give permission, but may and could are also possible. For example, can I borrow a pen? You can sit here. Could I open the window? May I ask you a question? When we talk about prohibition, we use can't and mustn't. Okay, now, on to the other hand, we have prohibition. Cuando te dicen que no debes hacer algo, okay? Te prohíben hacer cierta actividad. Para eso utilizamos can't or cannot y must not or mustn't. And now it's kind of tongue twister. So if you don't feel comfortable pronouncing mustn't, I will say must not helps you a little bit. For example, you can go into a restaurant without a tie. You can't drive in this country unless you are over 18. She is clearly not over 18, but we will erase that. You mustn't use your phone in class. Not in this class, actually. Can gives you the idea of something that is against the rules. Mustn't means that the speaker is the one that is setting the rule. For example, can't against the rules, for example, in the school, you can't a uh, kick a partner, for example. Yep. But for example, in your house, when your mom is telling you off or making a prohibition, you must not uh, eat the whole bag of candies. Okay. You have that two main difference in there. Por ejemplo, en el colegio, te dicen que no debes golpear a tus compañeros, por ejemplo, porque está en contra de las reglas. Pero en tu casa, cuando tu mamá es quien pone las reglas, o tu papá, o la persona que vive con ustedes, siempre te dice como, por ejemplo, no puedes comerte toda la bolsa de caramelos, ¿okay? o la bolsa de dulces. And that's the big difference between can't and must. When we talk about obligation, we use have to and must. Have to shows that the obligation comes from someone else, but not the speaker, like a rule or a law. Here we have the same difference, okay, but with new words in here. For example, I need a volunteer, I will say Leticia. Oh, no, Leticia, Luisana, better. So, please, could you read me this sentence in here? We have to be at the airport at least two hours before the flight. Great job. Okay. Just one little side note, or just one disclaimer. Airport. Okay. That two vowels sounds like just one vowel. Okay. Great pronunciation. So in here, we are with quotation against the rules, okay? We have to be at the airport at least two hours before the flight. I have to work on Saturday. Must shows us that the obligation comes from the speaker. 
I must hand in my thesis by tomorrow. Yeah, that's a mood actually. With homework. Okay, no. I'm just kidding. Don't do that at home. I really must call my parents. Here's an example of the differences between have and must. My doctor said that I have to stop smoking or I'll risk serious problems. That means that I have no choice but to stop smoking. Okay. En este ejemplo mencionan que mi doctor me dice que debo dejar de fumar porque tendré serios problemas, o pondré un gran peligro. Y lo que dice es no tengo ninguna otra opción excepto dejar de fumar. Okay? I must stop smoking. It cost me too much money. In this case, this is my decision. To say that something is... Another way to recognize how to use have to and must is, for example, to recognize our own goals, okay? If you have to plan, if you're planning or you want to set, for example, a, a specific goal, you're talking or you will use the verb must the one in red in this video, okay? For example, I must go to the park every day. I don't know. For example, to go for a walk in the park every day. That will be my own goal, okay? It's my decision to settle down, to settle that. To say that something is not an obligation, we can use don't have to. Like you don't have to wear a tie to go to that restaurant. Now let's practice. You come. Okay, so Leticia, your time. Please read the sentence and then tell me which one is the answer. Are you there or not? Hello, Leticia. I'm here with you. Don't be shy. Leticia? No worries. I will read that. Just tell me the meaning. Okay, the correct answer. So you, blah, 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 come to the meeting, but it will help us if you do. Okay, A or B. You come to the meeting, but it will help us if you do. Okay. Letter A. Letter A. Are you sure about that? No. <laughs> no, why not? You can tell that in Spanish, no worries. Or maybe letter B. <laughs> it, it doesn't work <laughs> like that. <laughs> okay. Remember, in this case, mustn't, or the, the main difference between mustn't and don't have to, is if I have a decision or not. Okay. For example, in this case, someone is telling me that you, blah, 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 Come to the meeting, but if you would help us, okay. If you if you can, okay. But I'm not expressing or settle the decision. Okay, it's not my goal, also. It's not my decision. So it will be letter B. You don't have to come to the meeting, but it will help us if you do. Okay. No es necesario que vengas a la reunión, pero si puedes ayudarnos o si puedes venir a ayudarnos, lo aceptaremos, ¿ok? That's a big deal. Just one more example and let's continue. In this case, we have to use don't have to. I can get a connection on my phone. I borrow yours. Ok, so Reynaldo, what do you think? Letter A or letter B? So related to the last class, in this case, we need to use letter A. 
Yes, because we're asking for a permission to use your phone, your phone. Yep, completely right. So let's continue with the slides. So, okay, here we have more information about that. In this case, we have must. Delegation comes from the speaker, in this case, from yourself, if you are talking, okay? So I must eat fruit. No more candies, no more candy cans, okay? So must, never, never ever, is followed by two, okay? Remember the one that's followed by two is have to or out to. Now I want a volunteer. Please, Miss India, with this one, the second one, please. You must complete the test in 45 minutes. A formal application. Totally. Thank you. Yeah, Reynaldo is telling a big rule also in the chat. It says, must always is followed by the main verb in the sentence. For example, eat or complete. Well, it has a, it has a rhythm. <laughs> in those sentences that we already read, we just read, my bad. So let's see. I will pick Leticia again. Let's go with a third one. You must watch the new trailer. It's a awesome. A strong recommendation. Very good. A strong recommendation. You must watch it. De verdad, tienes que verlo. That, that will be the, a very emphatic translation. Okay? And just one little side note. That word that is in the chat or this one, awesome, sounds like an at O at the beginning and then some, awesome, something like that, okay? No worries. And the last one with Reynaldo again, with the last one. Okay, I must do the homework. Deadline is today. This is an example of using must with uh, as an important reminder. And yep, an important reminder here. You need to do that. It's an obligation. Yep. An important. So in this time, we have prohibition. We have two possibilities. You can use mustn't or must not. You have those possibilities of, you have those possibilities to pronounce that. And then we have can't or cannot if you want. In this case, can can be replaced by isn't, aren't allowed to, okay? For example, we have, you can't use your cell phone while someone is speaking, okay? Or following this little example, let me put it. You are not allowed to use your cell phone while someone is speaking. In Spanish, it will be, tú no puedes usar el celular mientras alguien habla, o no tienes permitido utilizar el celular mientras alguien habla. Nice. Recuerden que cuando utilizamos isn't or aren't allowed it to is way more prohibition. <laughs> es mucho más fuerte la prohibición. ¿Ok? Any questions in here? Um, I'm seeing the chat. If you have something, let's see. I think Leticia or Luciana, that begins with Miss Indira in the first one, please. You mustn't park your car there. Okay. 
I like the pronunciation. Very good. Let's go with Leticia. You mustn't talk to strangers. Very good. You mustn't talk to strangers. And Luisana, the last one, but with a little disclaimer. You will do that with can't and also with isn't allowed it too. Okay, both of them. All right. Um, he can go out tonight. It's cool. He isn't allowed to go out tonight. It's cool. Very good. I like the pronunciation. Very good. No disclaimers. Well, cold. Remember that D? It's a long D. Cold. It's cold. Let's jump to the next one. Excellent. Thank you, Jenny. Okay. Uh, now we have uh, another model verbs that we use for obligation that we already know. It's have to. As we know, the obligation now comes from someone else, uh, from our teacher, from our supervisor, uh, our parents, something like that. It's something interesting. There is something interesting with this model, and we have it in the first um, cloud, that this can be in past or present tense. Cuando veamos los ejemplos, van a, van a verlo. And the other thing is that it has uh, a change with it is with third person. We don't say have to, we say has to. So to, to show those, those cases, we need to read the sentences. So please, uh, Johnny, can you read the first one, please? Of course, so. He had to work hard yesterday. In this case, it's in past tense. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Ya vimos un poco acerca del pasado en clases anteriores. Ya sabemos que yesterday hace clara referencia al pasado. So, she had to work hard yesterday. Excellent. Now, the second one, uh, please, Leticia. My doctor told me that I have to eat more meat. Okay, excellent. Give me a moment. Very good pronunciation, by the way. So I will read the third one. She has to correct this problem soon or the project will fail. Okay, excellent. So there is something important to say. Uh, we already know that the obligation comes from someone else. So in the second one, my doctor told me that I have to. So the doctor is selling me something. That's why we use have to. And in the third one, well, we are talking about he, so he has to correct this problem. Excellent. Thank you, Leticia. Thank you, Johnny. Excellent. Remember that if you have any question, please raise your hand or let us know in the chat. Good work. Now we are going to see the negative form. Uh, when, when we use the negative form of have to, we're talking about lack of necessity. Uh, it's something that it's not necessary to do. Algo que no es necesario hacer. So let's see the first one. Uh, Miss Indira, uh, could you read the first one, please? Yes. Um, my students must speak English in class, but they don't have to speak English in their break. Not true. <laughs> okay, so in this case, we have in the first line, must speak English in class. Deben hablar inglés en clase. 
the, there's a rule. And the, then we have, but they don't have to speak English in their break. Uh, I want you to practice all the time, says Miss Indira in the chat. That's correct. That's the, es lo más, es, es lo mejor. If we really, if we are really into the, the language. That's correct. Um, <laughs> sorry, I lost the idea. <laughs> uh, they don't have, okay. If they speak English in their break, it's awesome. But they, um, it's not a must, you know? So there's a big difference over there. They don't have to speak English, but if they do, it's wonderful. So the, the second one, please. Um, Johnny, your turn. Read the second one, please. I know I'm your favorite student. She doesn't have to wear <laughs> a long dress to the wedding. Uh, thank you. So, eh, no es necesario, it's not mandatory that for the wedding, you need to use a long dress. Excellent. And now, do, 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 Luisana, the third one, please. We don't have to watch this movie if it's boring. Exactly, good work. So it's not necessary. We don't need to, to see this movie if we don't want to. No tenemos que ver la película si es muy aburrida. Okay, I have some comments about the time, but okay. <laughs> uh -huh. Wonderful um, participation, guys. Thanks to you. So let's see the next one. If you have any question, please let us know. Okay, perfect. And now in this case, we're going to have some exercises. So uh -huh, we have four options and we need to fill the blank. In this case, I will have Leticia. Uh, please read the sentence and then tell us the answer. You don't have to come if you are bossy. No worries. Excellent. Good work. You don't have to come if you are... Uh, okay, the, the only comment about this is ocupado is busy. Yeah, it's a little bit weird, but it's busy, the, the pronunciation of that word. And no worries. It's like, okay, yeah, that works. Busy. Excellent. Thank you, Johnny. But with a large Z. Okay. So good work, Leticia. Excellent. You don't have to come. Excellent. Let's see the next one. And this one is for Luisan. Please read the sentence and then uh, tell us what do you think is the correct one. Mm, you must read the new book. You will love it. Okay, okay, good work. Yeah, excellent. You must read the new book. Uh, you will love it. It's a little hint. Uh, lo amarás. Es una pequeña pista que colocamos acá para que sea más sencillo responder en el sentido de que must lo utilizamos cuando es una recomendación fuerte, una recomendación así como, eh, sí, muy, muy apasionada, digamos. Eh, sabemos que la persona va a, hablar, va a amar el libro, so we can perfectly say you must read the new book. Okay, that's the answer. Excellent. And our third Sample. Okay, this one is for Johnny. Okay, so I will say my mom told me that I blah 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 be at home before 8:30. She's going to kill me. So I will say that I must be at home before 8:30. She's going okay. to kill me. Okay, excellent, good work. My mom told me that I must be at home. It's like, uh, well, we, we know that we must do it because, well, if 
if we don't, we are going to have problems. So yeah, <laughs> it's a it's a really strong uh, obligation. Let's say. Uh -huh. good work. Thank you. And um, okay, now it's all yours. Okay. While you're giving an advice with model burst, we have two possibilities: shit or out. Or all two, my bad. In most of cases, should is an advice that you give her to yourself. And how to is something that is morally correct in a society or something that people think is correct. For example, eating vegetable, vegetables, my bad, doing exercise or be a good person. That would be another advice that you could say with how to. I will say, for example... I should buy a gift for the teacher. I know Mason did a laugh cat, so I bought this little gift on the internet. <laughs> on to the other hand, with how to, we say we ought to eat lots of fruits and vegetables every day because it's something that people thought it's morally correct or in our society, eating vegetables is healthy, so it's automatically correct so let's see i want leticia to read the second one and then lisana the last one okay they shall not buy that all car okay we ought not to have ordered so much food very good let's see remember should we do not pronounce the L, should, okay? I should do something. And I think it's, yeah, quite good pronunciation for a good one. Let's jump to the next one. In this case, we have the difference between might and may. So in the last class, I said asking or Making a request with might, it's quite polite, okay? It's very, very, very polite. But if you are making a normal sentence without asking anything, or asking anything, my bad, it's quite different, okay? Quite different. For example, may is used to indicate that something is likely to be done, okay? For example, in Spanish, we use that with the verb poder, uh, Podemos hacer la tarea. We may do the homework. Okay, that's the, the possibility. It's like 50 50%. Okay? But the might indicates less probability, uncertainty. It's very, very common in American English to use might instead of perhaps or maybe. Okay, como podría hacerse o podría ser. We have more examples in the next slides. Uh, oh, my bad. For example, with might, we could use, I might know, but I don't know right now. Podría saber, pero no todavía. In this case, for example, Reynaldo, your turn. Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. I go to the bed tomorrow, but I'm not sure. Okay, in this case, could be I might go to the beach. Yup. Como puedo ir a la playa mañana, pero no estoy seguro. Okay, hay muy poca probabilidad de que vaya. Y bueno, sí, con esa foto no, no es muy bueno ir. Let's see, Miss Indira, your turn. <laughs> okay. I see a person going down the road. Hmm. We should drive Indira to the university. She doesn't have a car. Yep, it works with should. We can also use may, but you have a 50 50 person on the show. We should because Mason Indira doesn't really have a car. Mm -hmm. You have to be polite. Okay. Very good. Let's see, Leticia, your turn. Mm 
Hello there. Leticia, are you there? Leticia. No worries. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. <laughs> Read the sentence and tell us the correct answer of the one that you think is the correct one. Mm, maybe silk. Okay. I will say no, not right now. It's correct. It's grammatically correct. But as you may notice, in the last slides, I talk about something morality, something that people think in a society. For example, eating vegetables or fruits, it's healthy. So people think it's correct. Okay, totally correct. So in this case, we can use out of, but should it's a correct answer also, just in case, okay? Let's see, let's do this little reflect beyond. Okay, excellent. Uh -huh. in, in this case, well, we have a little presentation, some slides, and we have a um, one sentence and we have three possible options. The idea in here is that you tell us uh, which one do you think is the correct one. So uh, can you zoom a little bit to present here? I cannot see the words. Uh -huh. okay, 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 thank you. Uh -huh. Remember, you are in a li library. You uh -huh, speak loudly. So, um, um, Luisana, what do you think? Um, I was, it is mustn't. Okay, mustn't. So you must not speak loudly. That sounds good to me. What do you think, Miss Indira? Um, don't, no, mustn't or must not. I would say must not, but you have mustn't. Exactly, excellent. Good work, Lisanne. You must not or mustn't speak loudly. We need to respect the rule of the library. Good work. Let's see the next one. And this is for Leticia. You can write in the chat, Leticia, if your mic's not working. Uh -huh. Okay, so don't forget to take an umbrella. It, three possible options, rain later. What do you think, Leticia? Yeah, you, you can write the word in the, in the chat. You have might, you have can, and you have should. Okay, it might rain later. What do you think about that one, Miss Indira? Don't forget to take an umbrella. Yeah, I think that's correct. Because we don't know if it's gonna rain. It might, mm. it's possible. Exactly, okay, perfect. So okay. excellent work, Leticia. It might rain later. Good work. Let's see the next one. And this is for Johnny, the third one. Uh -huh. <clears throat> oh boy, really? <laughs> <laughs> so, might she wear jewelry to school? Does she have to wear jewelry to school? Or is she allowed to? I will say the last one. Is she allowed to wear jewelry to school? Johnny, you're right. Why do you say that? <laughs> why uh -huh. is 
Does she have to? Or may she? Because we are, I will say the school creates his own rules. So we try to ask if they will use something specifically according to that rules. Right. I so don't you know. know if you're following the rules of the school. Mm -hmm. Yep. Also, oh, the third one is the correct one, right? Yes, the third one is the correct one. Okay, okay. Good work, Yanni. Excellent. Uh -huh. So this one is again for Luisana. Betty can, can't, or has to be ill. I've just seen her. You, you can write in. Uh -huh. But she can be ill. I've just seen her. Uh, sorry, can you repeat the answer? Betty can't, can't, cannot. Uh -huh. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, there's yes. a really important difference between can and can't. Tenemos que enfatizar bastante el sonido allí. So, okay, good work. What do you think, Miss Indira? Yeah, that's correct, because it's not possible that she is ill or sick if we just saw her, because if she were ill or sick, she'd be at home in bed. She wouldn't be at school or work. So good job, Luisana. Okay, excellent. Let's do, uh, okay, let's see the next one. Uh -huh, this is for Leticia. Uh, okay, you vacuum the carpet. Phil's already cleaned the room. So you have three options. What do you think? You can write it in the chat if you want or using your microphone. Hmm. Maybe we can do a little hint over here. Uh-huh, okay, Leticia says mustn't. Mm. Okay, is that correct? Mm. No. I will not. say don't have, don't to. have to. Yep. Because if you say mustn't, it, you must not. That somebody's telling you it's forbidden to do something. So you mustn't vacuum the carpet means that you have a bad back or something and your doctor <laughs> says you mustn't vacuum the carpet, but you don't have to vacuum the carpet. It's not necessary because Phil cleaned for you. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's okay, wonderful. So the correct one in this case is don't have, don't to. have to. I knew that. Okay. Let's do just one more and we got it for today. Just one more for, yeah, for you, Johnny. <laughs> so in here we have Larry. Larry may be at home. His car is outside mustn't be at home or must be at home hmm i will say may larry may be at home because his car is outside hmm, hmm. that's that correct. makes sense for me yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that is because, that because it's a possibility yeah, mm -hmm. it's a 50 we don't know the answer. <laughs> we don't know where Larry is. Where is Larry? I don't know. He may perhaps, be at home. Perhaps he's at the home. Perhaps, yep. Uh, it is the Schrodinger's Larry's cat. <laughs> mm. Bad joke. <laughs> okay. So, uh-huh. 
well, yeah, we're, we're running out of time. So, well, that was basically our closing activity. As always, you're going to have everything in the classroom. So you can, you can keep practicing with those sentences. So as always, thank you very much for joining, guys. We are really glad to have you here uh, one more time. And well, please remember to fill out the attendance form. It's really important for us. And of course, do the classroom assignments for today's class, day 11 already. And just one little thing before that. Si tiene algún conocido que quiera aprender inglés en este espacio, le pueden decir que se inscriba en nuestro classroom, ¿ok? Y recuerden hacer las actividades. Cualquier cosa, nos vemos la semana que viene. Si tienen alguna duda, la pueden decir por el classroom, ¿ok? Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, everybody. Happy New Year. See you next week. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Nice to Bye. see you again. So nice to see you again. Have a new year. We hope to see you next week. Take care. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.